We have some new information regarding Xboxes and Bethesda's combined E3 showcase and maybe some of the games that might be there or some new reveals. And it looks like I might have to apologize about Starfield. There's a lot here to talk about, so let's get into it. What is going on everybody? It's Randall Thor 19, the man with the million, back again with another video. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. If you guys can do me a huge favor, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and please hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. There's actually a lot here to discuss and go over between Matt Booty's comments about E3 and Xbox and Bethesda combining their showcase to other comments regarding COVID and how it affected Xbox. Xbox Game Studios, and then of course there's Bethesda, a lot of information and rumors floating out there. Nobody really knows what the game is, but there's rumors that Tom Cruise, yes, Tom Cruise, may actually be voicing a character in Starfield, which isn't that much of a stretch considering Bethesda got Patrick Stewart for Oblivion and Liam Neeson to voice a character in Fallout 3. So maybe this Tom Cruise things end up being true and it's all based on the fact that Bethesda tweeted at Tom Cruise a couple years ago. So maybe he's in the game. But the big rumors surrounding Starfield are based on its release date. People wanna know, is it coming out this year? Is it coming out early 2022? And we got some new information from Jason Schreer that basically says we are going to be waiting for the game for quite some time and I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit later on in the video. But first I wanna talk about Xbox's E3 plans with Bethesda and this interview that Matt Booty gave to a French website talking about a whole bunch of different things. And you know what, this is very interesting because ever since the Bethesda Roundtable where Phil Spencer and Aaron Greenberg, Pete Hines, Todd Howard, Sarah Bond, and Matt Booty got together to talk about that extraordinary partnership, the executive leadership team at Microsoft and Xbox have been incredibly quiet. They haven't really given any interviews. They haven't talked about plans for the future. I always assumed they were gonna wait for E3 and then maybe they would start giving more interviews to talk about their plans for the future future, Game Pass, Xbox Game Studios, all that sort of stuff. So this is the first interview we've gotten from somebody since the Bethesda deal, and Xbox has still yet to announce when their E3 showing is. We know they're part of E3. We know E3 is gonna be taking place between June 12th and June 15th. I have a feeling that Microsoft and Xbox might actually announce next week when the date actually is going to be. So the article goes on to say E3 2021 is right around the corner and fans continue to speculate what Microsoft has in store this year. With Microsoft Bethesda's acquisition now complete, fans were wondering whether Microsoft would merge the Xbox and Bethesda showcase or hold them separate. Sadly, Microsoft has refrained from confirming either of the two with Bethesda's E3 2021 presence still largely a mystery. Interestingly, a new interview with Xbox Game Studios director Matt Booty sheds more light on the aftermath of Bethesda's buyout, including the much needed confirmation about Bethesda's E3 showcase. Speaking to the French media outlet Le Figaro, Matt Booty revealed more info what fans should expect from the Xbox and Bethesda brand later this year. As it seems, Microsoft will hold a joint conference in a few weeks to talk about its upcoming games. Booty is seemingly referring to E3 2021, which takes place from June 12th, 2021 to June 15th, 2021. He further went on to confirm that future Bethesda games would release day one on Xbox Game Pass. Well, there we have it straight from Matt Booty, the head of Xbox Game Studios. Xbox and Bethesda are planning a joint conference. It's no longer going to be, hey, Xbox, you're doing a show for an hour and there's going to be a break and then it's going to be followed up by Bethesda for an hour. It's going to be one show hopefully about two hours because I want to see a lot of games and I know you guys want to see a lot of games with a Bethesda section probably somewhere within the Xbox show now whether the Bethesda sections 30 minutes long or 40 minutes long or 20 minutes long I guess depends on whatever Bethesda plans to show I think Starfield will 100% be there which we will touch on a little bit later on with the information that Jason Schreer dropped today but I'm also expecting new announcements from Machine Games where they reveal Wolf Einstein 3 and Arcane Austin's new title, which is referred to as Project Omen, a vampire game. Can't wait to see what they're doing, even if that information is wrong, because who really knows about these titles that Bethesda are
are making. And for any of you who doubted if Xbox would put the Bethesda games into Game Pass on day one, Matt Booty reconfirms it. Although I can't believe there's too many of you because Microsoft basically said they were gonna do this back when they acquired Bethesda in September and during the round table again in March. So yeah, if you wanna play Starfield and all future Bethesda games, they're gonna be really cheap on Game Pass. You can essentially get them for $10 a month or $15 a month. And Microsoft is going to probably nail this point home during the conference because while us hardcore who watch my videos or pay attention on YouTube and are on gaming Twitter know that Bethesda is now part of Xbox, Microsoft needs to convince all the casual gamers out there, all the people that love Elder Scrolls but don't really pay attention to what's going on in the gaming industry, that yes, Bethesda is owned by Xbox. The only place you'll be able to play Bethesda games in the future is on Xbox. So expect them to really really hammered that point home. Past rumors suggested that Microsoft and Bethesda's E3 showcases would take place separately, but one after the other, as it seems that might not be the case, as Xbox and Bethesda would seemingly be under the same banner this E3. Booty also discussed how the ongoing pandemic seems to have affected Xbox's first party studios. According to him, the production of new IPs and originals seem to have been hit the most instead of sequels to existing franchises. With Bethesda's acquisition now complete, Xbox has 23 studios in its arsenal, some of which are working on new IP. And yeah, here comes the somber part for me about Xbox's first party studios. I know a lot of people are looking forward to seeing more from Perfect Dark and Fabled and Avowed and Hellblade 2 and Everwild, but I don't think we'll see any of those games at this show. Matt Booty just said, you know what? COVID really hit us hard, especially new IPs that the teams are working on. They have been hit hardest. So personally, I'm going in with the expectations of this C3 that Microsoft is really going to focus on the games coming out this year and 2022. So that means expect a large showcase on Forza Horizon 5, hopefully Halo Infinite, Age of Empires 4, Starfield, perhaps Wolfenstein 3 and Project Omen, and maybe announcements from Xbox Global Publishing, Project Typhoon, As Dust Falls, and maybe one other. And I think then Microsoft will round out the show with Battlefield 6 Day 1 Game Pass announcement, maybe a Far Cry 6 there if they have the marketing, and then some indie titles that are going to be launching Day 1 in Game Pass. Maybe we see more of Warhammer Darktide or Stalker 2. But the point I'm trying to make here and get across is that games like Perfect Dark and Fable and Hellblade 2 and Avowed and Everwild more than likely won't get a dedicated segment during E3 this year. It's possible they show up in a sizzle trailer, but I don't expect Microsoft to talk about those games because I think most of those games, if not all of those games, are set to come out 2023 and beyond. The article continues by saying, this number could expand even further with recent rumors suggesting that Microsoft would make another Bethesda level acquisition this year. On being asked about the same, Booty said that he couldn't share anything at the moment. He further dived into clarifying how Microsoft doesn't want its long line of Xbox Game Studios to make games simply based on what might work best on Xbox Game Pass. With Game Pass being Xbox center of attention, many fans have started to speculate that Microsoft would eventually double down on making games that have more longevity, including live service titles. If Booty's words are anything to go by, this shouldn't be the case. Now that should put a lot of people's minds at ease because there's always been this negative reaction regarding Game Pass that some people have because they think it's going to change how developers make their games. And with Game Pass being a central focus of Microsoft and Xbox as a whole, a lot of people were fearing that Microsoft's Xbox Game Studios and Bethesda would focus on live service titles that would work in Xbox Game Pass. And Booty's basically saying that isn't the case. They're just going to make games that those studios wanna make. Some of them will be live service games, of course. Some of them won't. And that's the beauty of Xbox Game Pass. It can be a single player title. It can be a multiplayer title but Xbox Game Studios isn't going to be making games specifically for Xbox Game Pass. Now, the other part here about acquisitions, everybody wants to know if Xbox is going to acquire more studios. I think they will eventually. Who knows if it'll be this year? Who knows if it'll be individual studios? As I don't really think Xbox wants to buy individual studios to put under Matt Booty. He's already running 15 teams. If they do buy individual studios, I think they'll put them under Bethesda. Of course, I'm sure everybody's seen the rumors regarding WB Games and what's going on with them 
because of the merger with Discovery, and it seems like all their game studios will be going to Discovery, but who knows if Discovery actually wants to be in the video game industry. So perhaps WB Games is calling up all the people who were interested a year ago or a year and a half ago when they were shopping those studios before. So maybe Warner Brothers Games is calling Microsoft, EA, Activision, and basically saying, hey, you know what? We're up for sale. Discovery doesn't want to be in the video game industry outside of mobile games. What can you offer us? And I think the reason Xbox didn't make the move to buy WB Games last time was about IP ownership. And I still think that could be a blocker this time, but only time will tell if anything happens with Warner Brothers Games. Could Xbox buy them? Of course they could. Do they want them? I think 100% Xbox would love to have WB Games, but it's all about that IP ownership. Now I wanna talk about Starfield for a little bit here. As we have Luke Stevens who said, apparently Starfield has been quote, pretty much done since September of last year. BGS has spent this year polishing it and refining the next gen port. I'm told they're trying to make up for Fallout 76 and deliver a game that's polished to perfection coming this year, watch. And then Jason Schreer said, rumors like this keep floating around, but Starfield is nowhere near done. According to several people familiar with development, it'll be at E3, but the planned release date I've heard is way later than most people expect. Sharing this so that folks keep their expectations in check. And then he later clarified by saying, let me make this very clear. Bethesda's plan is to tease a release date for Starfield at E3. That date is in late 2022. I'll leave the specifics to them, but please keep your expectations in check and refrain from sending death threats when the other rumors turn out to be false. Now, first things first, I absolutely 100% believe Jason. He's usually 100% right when it comes to stuff like this. He has great sources. So it looks like Starfield is going to come out at the end of 2022, probably quarter four, maybe somewhere between September and November. And I know a lot of people are gonna be upset with me. Hey, you were quoted in articles. You said the game was finished. You said it was gonna be coming this year. But the only thing I was for sure 100% on was that it was coming to Xbox and PC and wouldn't be on PlayStation or the Nintendo Switch. I have a lot of people who tell me things behind the scenes who have been right in the past that have shared information with me. And I usually don't share that in my videos or I hint at it here and there. Obviously the information that I was told by people I trust ended up not being true. It happens sometimes. So I apologize if anybody's upset with me for thinking that Starfield was coming sooner than it really is. I apologize and I'll try to do better in the future. Anyways guys, that's the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Please hit that notification bell if you haven't already and wanna be notified immediately whenever I drop a video like this. Please share this out on social media or tell a friend about the channel. And if you wanna take your support even further, you can always hit that join button where you will get access to channel badges and even emotes for the Xbox 2 podcast we do every single week with Jess Corden from Windows Central. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Later guys.